Good morning. How the devil are you doing this fine day? Me? Well, every weekend I tell myself I will take a rest, take it easy, chill out and recuperate so that I don't start a new week feeling tired. And every weekend I fail. But I will not let a little tiredness stand in the way. We have a packed show for you today, and it's a big week also for other non-breakfast show content too. I'll tell you all about that in just a little bit. So while I'm posting the question of the day, let's roll the intro and get this show very much on the road. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It's Monday, the 17th of January, and as that remarkably persistent guy just said, welcome to The Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. Uh, in today's show, no news is bad news, as the Didcot investigation looks set to drag on and on. Uh, London Mayor Sadiq Khan has called for a recall of the migrant workers lost as a result of the Brexit vote. Uh, we're out, out on site with our friend Peter Haddock over at Content with Media as he checks out the UK's first CAT 395 excavator. Uh, we have a versatility overload when Mechalac met Encon. And go big, go electric or go home. Hitachi will tell you more. We'll get to all of that in just a second. But first, let's see who among the rich and the shameless will be celebrating a birthday on this day of days. Happy birthday! And it's many happy returns to American founding father and inventor Benjamin Franklin and to former British Prime Minister David Lloyd George, to gangster Al Capone and to a legendary boxing coach who guided Floyd Patterson and Mike Tyson to glory, Alex Cus um, to actress and entertainer Betty White, who sadly passed away just a week or so ago at the ripe old age of 99. Happy birthday also to um, the voice of Darth Vader, James Earl Jones, to comedian Jim Carrey, and to the former US First Lady Michelle Obama. But far more importantly, today marks the birthday of a sporting giant and an icon. The man born Cassius Clay, the man once dismissed as the Louisville Lip, the man stripped of his heavyweight title, the man who changed his name, but is rightly known simply as the greatest, Mr. Muhammad Ali. Many happy returns to them, one and all. <laughs> And we start with the news that there is to be no news. As you all know, um, we are fast approaching the sixth anniversary of the Didcot disaster in which four demolition workers lost their lives way back in February 2016. An investigation by the Health and Safety Executive and Thames Valley Police has been moving at a glacial pace ever since that fateful day and has so far failed to provide any indication of the cause of the boiler house collapse. So, having grown increasingly frustrated at the apparent lack of progress in the investigation, and with the help of our friend Mick Norton, I hit both the HSE and Thames Valley Police with a Freedom of Information request to find out where we are almost six years on. Sadly, the response from Thames Valley Police merely compounded the frustration felt by the industry, by the other demolition workers at, that were there on the day, and far more importantly, um, by the families of the four men that lost their lives. This is the response I received. Thames Valley Police continues to lead a joint investigation between ourselves and the Health and Safety Executive after four men died following the partial collapse at Didcot Power Station on the 23rd of February 2016, which was launched immediately following the incident. We continue to investigate corporate manslaughter, gross negligence manslaughter and health and safety offences. We also maintain close contact with the Crown Prosecution Service, providing them with regular updates on the investigation. We maintain regular proactive contact with the families through our dedicated family liaison officers, who are there for, uh, who are there for the families if they wish to ask anything about the investigation. In addition to this, um, the SIO and his management team provide regular updates to the family in person or online. Updates have been provided by the investigation team on an agreed periodic basis or where there is a significant update to provide. We also maintain regular contact with the Crown Prosecution Service with updates on the investigation. At this time, it is not possible for us to put specific time frame for the investigation 
to be completed. The dedicated investigation, uh, the uh, let me try that again. The dedicated investigation team will continue their work to ensure a thorough investigation is completed in the interests of justice and to deliver answers for the families. So, based on all of that, it seems as if the sixth anniversary is to pass, pass just like the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, with no answers, no prosecution, and absolutely no closure. The Miller GT series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting-edge intelligent coupler technology, increasing job site safety machine versatility and productivity. It's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford. To find out more, visit millergroundbreaking.com. Towards the end of last year, those fine folks at Cat Plant took delivery of the UK's first Cat 395 excavator. So we dispatched our roving reporter and resident expert in all things Caterpillar, Peter Haddock, to go and take a look. And he very kindly sent us this report. The first in the UK Cat 395 excavator. Peter has produced a superb 12-minute video of that machine in action, together with an interview with Cat Plant MD Ronnie Harrod. You can check that out um, over on Peter's uh, Content with Media YouTube channel, and you can also use the link that I've just posted in the chat to go and take a look. It's well worth it. 12 minutes of your day that will be very, very well spent indeed. So imagine you work for a big organization. You work hard and you work diligently and you drive that organization to greater and greater levels of success. Then one day there is a vote throughout that organization and those taking part in that vote, including your fellow workers, decide that your presence is no longer required and you are kicked out. Then just a few weeks later, that organization recognizes the error of its ways. It realises what a huge contribution you had made to its success and admits that it is struggling without you. So what do you do? Do you let bygones be bygones and come back as if nothing had happened? Or do you just watch from the sidelines as that organisation gradually falls in upon itself? Now imagine that organisation was Great Britain PLC and that the workers in question were those that were unceremoniously kicked out when the UK voted to turn its back on Europe. Just how keen would you be to let me try that again? Just how keen would you be to return to a country that had treated you with such disdain? Well, we could soon find out if uh, London Mayor Sadiq Khan gets his way. Uh, Sadiq Khan has called for, on the government to create a temporary visa scheme for construction workers to alleviate the double impact of the pandemic and Brexit on labour supply here in the capital. The Mayor of London says a coronavirus visa is needed to help sectors struggling with labour shortages, including construction. Khan said this should offer the right to work in the UK for at least 12 months and be tailored to specific sectors. 
He pointed to official fig- to, uh, official figures showing the construction industry had 48,000 vacancies in August to October, the highest figure for 20 years. Khan warned his plans to build more affordable housing will be jeopardised if labour shortages continue. This follows publication of a plan to um, build 52,000 homes in the capital each year over the next 10 years. Sadiq Khan said the construction sector forms a key part of London's COVID recovery plan. However, both our recovery and efforts to deliver the genuinely affordable homes Londoners desperately need could now be put at risk if there isn't the skilled workforce available to build them. I realise that those migrant workers still need to earn a living and that the prospect of, of a return to London might be attractive and potentially lucrative. But I've got to be honest, I know what my answer would be. Axsoft and Svantec are your high-end partners for noise, vibration, dust and air quality systems, sensors and software. To find out more, visit axsoft.co.uk or call 01234 639 550. As we all barrel down the road towards a net zero future, it seems that there will be a fork in the road for construction equipment. It appears that uh, compact equipment will trundle quietly down the road marked electric, while larger equipment will travel the road marked hydrogen. But if this new video from Hitachi is anything to go by, that journey is not quite as clear cut as some might have you believe. Because Hitachi's big mining with, let me try that one more time, got somebody else's teeth in this morning, uh, because Hitachi's big mining trucks have taken the road less travelled. Hitachi Construction Machinery is committed to the global challenges facing mining today, especially as demand increases for technology that's environmentally conscious and supports a more sustainable industry. Many organisations are acting against climate change by reducing their environmental footprint and setting emissions reduction targets. At Hitachi Construction Machinery, we also want to contribute to a more sustainable society by creating zero emission solutions and mining machinery that meets industry needs. One of these solutions is our battery dump truck. This concept replaces the diesel engine and alternator with an onboard battery system that would be capable of similar productivity and performance output, but would produce less exhaust emissions from the equipment. Hitachi Construction Machinery and its partner ABB are also exploring many battery charging methods to cater to diverse customer needs and mine operations. One option includes static battery charging systems installed across the mine site. The battery truck simply drives up alongside and attaches to the charging station. One or multiple static charging stations can be installed on a single charging site to maximise productivity and recharge many trucks at once. Another charging option utilises catenary systems as an energy source. The dump truck uses a pantograph to connect to the power supply, adopting an already existing solution from our trolley trucks. This dynamic trolley system allows recharging and travel to occur simultaneously on one or multiple trucks making this an efficient charging method by reducing fleet downtime. Truck speed must be managed under the catenary to allow enough time to charge. Advancements in battery technology today means the dump truck's onboard battery will be capable of operating for extended periods before requiring a recharge. And both the static and dynamic charging methods currently in development will deliver solutions to our customers that will cater to their environmental needs and contribute to lower operational costs too. With many power module platform design concepts in development, we are exploring various options for our battery truck technology and preliminary work is underway to incorporate this technology into our excavator range too. The advancements we have already made in mining machinery innovation, combined with the future solutions in development, highlight our commitment in achieving a zero emission mining future. So, could we yet see a, an electronic solution for the demolition industry? I certainly wouldn't be surprised.
Take one truly versatile carrier machine. Add in the versatility of a quick change front end and a multitude of attachments, and you have yourself a versatility overload. And this is what happened when Mechalac met Encom. <laughs> That's like adding a Swiss Army knife tool to a Swiss Army knife. Now, before I head off into the chat to see what you're all saying this fine morning, I just wanted to give you a very quick heads up. We, or rather I, am planning to try out a new weekend show, and we're calling it The Saturday Social. There are lots of reasons why I think this might be a good idea, but the key one, I think, is that a lot of people that watch this show do so while they're doing something else and don't really get the opportunity to actually take part in the discussions, particularly the prolonged discussions that take place after the show has ended. So we're going to try out a new show format at 10 a.m. this coming Saturday. There will be no videos and no specific agenda. I will just come up with a topic or two, hit the go live button and just see where the conversation takes us. You will be able to join the chat as usual, or if you wish, you can actually come on the show yourself, assuming you have either a webcam or a smartphone. Uh, we won't be doing this every weekend. I'm, I'm warning you now because I would I die, ideally like to remain married. Uh, but if, if you think you would like to take part in that, please do so. Um, <clears throat> Even if we only do it once or twice a month, it will give you all an, op all an opportunity to voice your opinion or just to chat with some like-minded industry professionals. And if you'd like to suggest any topics for discussion, please feel free. Uh, my plan is merely to provide the platform. The discussion really needs to come from you guys. I'll keep you uh, posted on all of that. And while we're about it, don't forget, on Wednesday evening at 6 p.m., I will be hosting our attachment special show in partnership with those fine folks at Steel Wrist. So if you're interested in crunches and munches, grabs and breakers, you're in for a treat. And if you'd like to win yourself a Steel Wrist baseball cap or a key ring, then tune in as well because we've got four sets of those to give away as well. That's uh, six o'clock on Wednesday this week. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. Right, that should do us for today. I'm going to roll the outro in just a second before leaping gazelle-like over into the chat to see what you're all saying today. Uh, if you can't stick around, stay safe, look after yourself, your family, your friends and your colleagues, and thanks for watching. But if you do have the time, I'll see you on the other side of this. Mm -hmm.